Let's go over a sample panel that is demonstrating anti-Duffy A. Our antibody screen would have come up positive, letting us know there is an antibody, but we can't identify with the antibody screen. We have to use an antibody panel. This is letting us know these are donor cells, donor reagent cells. These are the antigens that may or may not be present on the donor reagent cells. This is letting us know if the antigen is present or not present. We're not grading reactions here, just present or not present. Over here we are grading uh, the reactions. This is immediate spin testing, which is room temperature, 37 degrees. AHG, check cells. Check cells are only checking that the AHG was actually negative. We run it to confirm a negative AHG. We know this is two because we're getting this amoeba spin in 37 reactions here. They wrote them down. You have to incubate at 37, but you don't have to read it. You do have to read AHG, and gel reads at AHG. It does get incubated at 37, though. I wrote down here the antigen systems whose antibodies can exhibit dosage. I included Cal here because they do occasionally exhibit dosage, the antibodies. Keep that in mind as you're ruling out antibodies. You, with a negative reacting cell, you either need two reactions that are negative with heterozygously expressed cells or one time with a homozygously expressed cell because it's strongest, it's weakest if it's heterozygously expressed. So we rule out with negative cells. And what do I say by, what do I mean when I say negative cells? I'm talking about there's no reaction with the donor reagent cell to um, the patient's serum or plasma. And again, that three plus is not a reaction, uh, it's a check. It's not a reaction with the um, antigens, it's a check cell of the AHG being um, confirming its negative reaction. Use a ruler. I'm using a skimpy piece of paper. That's all I have right now. If you don't use a ruler, students have consistently, or what you will make a mistake, students have consistently made mistakes if they try not to use a ruler or start jumping around in the anagram as they start filling up, crossing off up here. So always use your ruler. Always go from top to bottom, left to right. It's the best way not to make a mistake. So I've got my negative cell. I circled it in case I got lost with this piece of paper. Ruling out big D. There is no little d. It's a placeholder. Ruling out big C. It's homozygously expressed in this cell. There is no little c. Just the big C antigen is present. It's homozygously expressed. Little e is being homozygously expressed. Big E is present. Big, or excuse me, little e is present. Big E is not present. going to rule these out halfway. They're heterozygously expressed in this case. They're both present, making each other weaker, potentially weaker. It's homozygously expressed is the strongest it can be right here. Homozygously expressed, the strongest it can be right here. Homozygously expressed is the strongest it can be right here. M is homozygously expressed, it goes with N. Big S, homozygously expressed, it goes with little s. It's by itself, it's the strongest it can be. There's Luther A and G next time. Little c, antigens present, but it's cohort there. Big C is also present, so this is a heterozygous expression. We can't mark it off completely. It's been weakened a little bit. So we want to see either another homozygous cell, meaning that the little c is present by itself and big E, or excuse me, little c is present by itself and big C is not present with it, or we could see another heterozygous cell where big C and little c were present together with no reaction with the patient's serum or plasma. As I start filling this in, you can notice that um, I'm starting to fill up in here. Don't start skipping around. You'll make a mistake. Probably, most likely. Little K is present. 
homozygously here. It's as strong as it can be, so I can actually cross it off completely. If it was heterozygously expressed, I still could, because it's the second time I will have seen it. JKA, JKB, excuse me, homozygously expressed can mark it off. <clears throat> M was already, as well as checking, M was already marked off um, completely. I'd used this before for a video, so excuse the erasers. Big S was marked off. Little s is here, heterozygously expressed. Can halfway mark it off. We'll see, I can mark off completely now. It's homozygously expressed. As again, as I'm going through these, if you don't see me going up here crossing them off, I'm looking at it and seeing they're already crossed off, so I don't need to do it again. Like I said, better to be conscientious than to um, start skipping around. In halfway here, it's heterozygously expressed. It's the N antigens present with the M, making the N less, um, not as strong. Big E is being heterozygously expressed because little e antigens present along with it. So I can do a half cross off. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, hold on. So big E is present, but it's present heterozygously with, um, excuse me, here it is. Big E is present heterozygously with little e, so it's weaker. So I did a half cross off for that. Everything else, let me go back. N is now on a homozygous cell, so I can cross that off. S is now on a homozygous cell, so I can cross it off. Okay. Again, uh, you're going to be probably asked a question on your assignment and definitely your assessment saying, what antibody do you suspect? That's not the same as, I can't cross it off completely. KPA, this is low incidence, so we don't worry about that. JSA, low incidence antigen. We're not going to worry about that. Remember, once we have an antibody identified, we always test the donor cells that a patient's going to get. We test them through AHG, and that's a confirmation, not picking up some random, um, you know, let's say there was, for some weird reason, a KPA antigen on a donor cell, and the patient did have KPA antibody. We would pick something up when we test it through AHG. We're not going to spend time, resources, money to try and find a cell that's positive to rule out KPA. Same with JSA. So we're left with um, big E. It's already halfway crossed off. Um, we could pull a um, unit, or excuse me, we could pull our screen cells to see if one of those is um, not reacting with the patient's serum or plasma, and we could. Um, rule E out completely with that. We might go into the refrigerator and pull an expired um, reagent set and grab a cell from that antibody panel that's expired. We're allowed to do that and uh, because we're just um, doing our confidence, making our confidence level a little higher to rule it out completely. And we would um, find one that was positive for big E that's not reacting with the patient's serum or plasma. Same thing with uh, big K. But if you were to look in this and we pulled up the antigens, you don't see really even any pattern of reactivity that's making us think that it's there. What we do see with Duffy A is every time the antigen is present, it's reacting. When it's not present, it's not reacting. And we have our rule of three. Three places where the antigen's um, present and it's reacting and three places where the antigen is not present and it's not reacting. We also see in these... Um, reactions that every time the patient's serum or plasma is tested with a cell that is heterozygous for Duffy 
A, like this cell, see the reaction is 2 plus at AHG. Every time it's homozygous, like this, that's a heterozygous, there's our 2 plus, it's homozygously expressed here, um, and again, um, heterozygous means that Duffy A is present here, and um, its little cohort is Duffy B. And here, Duffy A is present, there is no Duffy B, and we have a strong reaction. And if the patient hadn't been transfused recently, we would also test the patient, and they should not have the Duffy A antigen.